Are you looking for a space where you will learn to improve your mental strength, emotional health, and heal your insecurities from the inside out? Take the first step to living a more meaningful life with the Better Me with Body by Brie podcast. I'm your host, Brie. I'm a certified personal trainer, entrepreneur, and mother of three. I've helped empower thousands of women to take action through fitness, nutrition, meditation, personal development, and aligning thoughts with action. This podcast is for those who are ready to feel inspired and motivated to live a more purposeful life. Let's grow together. Have you ever wanted to teach your child how to have a growth mindset? Maybe you wish you knew foundational tools young so you could have a natural growth mindset in your life. Well, now is your chance. I'm teaming up with Dr. Kim, who is also known as the Parentologist, and she shares with us her tools on how to teach your child to overcome obstacles so they enjoy learning and growing to become self-sufficient. This episode was so helpful for my own children, and I hope it will help you as well. Let's get started. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Kim. I am so excited you're here. You are just a wealth of knowledge. I'm so excited for you to share all that knowledge with our listeners today. Thank you so much for having me. It's just an honor to be here and excited to talk with you today. Well, I honestly don't know how you get everything done in the day. When I was introducing you, I'm like, okay, how is this one person? Seriously. Uh, I don't know. I get asked that a lot and, you know, how I balance, you know, working and motherhood and it's always been a challenge. Somehow it seems to always get done. Um, but it's, it's a lot. I have a lot on my plate, but I love what I do. So it never feels like work. Um, I'm very passionate about what I do and I just, um, I love being a mom and I, I love working with children. So it's, um, something I really like. So it never really feels, um, like work to me, but it's a lot. <laughs> Amazing. Well, today what we're going to focus on is your uh, like teaching your children a growth mindset. And I am very passionate about this because I teach this like me and Adam are always trying to have a growth mindset and we're always researching on how to have a growth mindset. And so I was like that's genius to teach this to our children. And Absolutely. Yeah. And so can you tell us um, the importance of a growth mindset and specifically for children? Yeah, absolutely. You know, where I work and working with kids, you know, it's having a gross mindset, I feel like is really important for their overall well-being. Um, it's a way that they can think positively and in a forward direction, especially with everything they've been through in this last year uh, with the pandemic and all the challenges that they've had to face, you know, um, feeling like they can get through it and maybe they haven't accomplished something yet. Maybe there's been a setback because they've been stuck at home this whole time or whatever the case may be. Um, but teaching children to have a growth mindset, um, as I wrote in a recent blog, you know, it creates a love for learning. Uh, it gives them a greater strength to try new and difficult things. And it gives them a sense of resilience when obstacles um, come their way, like last year. Um, it's been a really big learning year, I think, for a lot of children. And if they have this type of growth mindset, um, you know, they can grow more when things are challenging. You know, when things aren't easy, you know, it can teach them to have persistence and determination and confidence. And obviously, we want our kids to have all of those things to survive in this world, this crazy world, and especially as they grow older and grow up and encounter more obstacles obstacles. Um, it's a really great thing to have. Right. I love that. And can you explain exactly what a growth mindset is? Yeah, sure. The way I've defined it, I think, you know, different people over time have defined it in, you know, a little bit different ways, but I define it as a philosophy about how to view life through a positive and fluid lens. So there's really no end. It's more about the process and not the outcome. It's about how you experience life and the perspective that you have on life versus, you know, what actually happens, whether it's even my own children or children I work with, you know, I hear them say sometimes, you know, I'm not good enough or I'm stupid or I can't do it. And, you know, we always like to add the word yet at the end. Okay, we haven't done it yet, but you can and you will. And, you know, just because something is hard doesn't mean they can't do it. Just because they failed the first time doesn't mean they'll succeed the second time. So it's really just about the effort that they put in and the attitude of the task um, that gives them that growth mindset versus having a fixed mindset where it is very closed off and it's 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 very rigid and it's it's not working. So I'm done. Versus, okay, it's not working. I need to try harder. I need to practice more. Um, it's that shift, um, you know, when it comes to challenges, mistakes, failed attempts, and things like that. 
I love that. So if you, can you give examples of like phrases that would be a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset to kind of just reiterate what we're talking about? Yeah, sure. I love that because I feel like um, I, I'm a very practical person. I like having things right in front of me. I don't like having things too ambiguous, especially as a parent. I like having it written down for me of saying, okay, if my child says this, how can I shift it um, to make it from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset? So here's a couple of examples. So let's say your child says, I can't do it, which I think is all parents. I think every child has said that in their lifetime at some point in their lives. And so a parent will, will go back and say, I know it's difficult, but you just haven't figured it out yet um, okay. to, to give them that space to try again and to keep trying. Um, so another one is a child says, I did it, but, you know, focusing on the bad parts of I did it, but I didn't do it the best or I didn't, you know, they'll think of something on the negative side of it. So instead of saying I did it, but a parent can say you did it and... And so we're placing the butt with the and of saying, and you did a great job. You did the best you could. You know, you tried your hardest, you know, something like that. Um, another one would be a child will say, I'm not good enough. And a parent can respond, I know you're disappointed and I can see you're upset, but I know you can do it. Let's take a break and try again tomorrow. You know, so there's no pressure in the moment. You know, like I said, it's about the process. So it, some things take time. Some things do take practice. Some things do take multiple attempts to get them done. Um, and if a child's frustrated or upset or, you know, clearly needs a break, then that's okay. They can come back to it the next day. So I noticed too, I feel like, because I was trying, I really want to teach my children this. And it's funny how much like specific personalities play a role because mm -hmm. I have for example, my six-year-old Olivia, she came out with a growth mindset. Like she <laughs> so better. She's like makes her own behavioral charts that she's laminated and like <laughs> awesome. yeah. a child after my own heart. <laughs> she's like, it's funny. I almost feel like she's my parent because I'm I'm not like that. I'm a very laid back, like I love growth mindset, but she is honestly like, she's like, I can do it, I can learn it. Like we had, um, an Ikea dresser, you know, and I, I like pulled out all the pieces and I look at it and yeah. I'm like, you know what, let's just wait for dad and let's just have dad, <laughs> dad do this. And she's like, mom, <laughs> she's like, you can do this mom, read the directions. Let's figure it out together. You know, that's how her that's like, funny. Her, yeah. that's great. But also my son, Jameson, he is the complete opposite. So every single thing that he tries He's like, I can't do it. It's too hard. You do it for me, mom. Like everything. He's five yeah. and he's like still, or he's almost five. He still wants me to like put his pants on, you know? So right. I noticed that some people might be harder. Like it comes natural for them to think forward, think and have this growth mindset where some people, they come out and it is something that they have to work on. It doesn't come natural to them. So how I like, do you have any tips for how to help maybe a Jameson that it's just like his first thought is I can't do it always. Right. Um, and I think, you know, part of that is, I, I definitely think part of that is personality, you know, temperament. I think some part, um, some parts of it have to do with birth order. I'm going to be writing a blog soon on birth order because I'm so fascinated by it, you know, about firstborns versus secondborns and whatnot. Um, you know, and part of it could still be his age, you know, his cognitive and developmental level, you know, could be some of that. Um, again, your daughter may have been that way, you know, since since birth, you know, but sometimes I think children can kind of grow out of that the more autonomous and independent they become. So the older he gets and the more he is you know, able to maybe have more responsibility, like once he actually goes to, you know, school every day and, you know, those types of things, um, you know, he might kind of grow in and shift into that. Um, but in the meantime, you know, there's definitely some questions that I like to ask my clients and even my own children sometimes to try and get them to start thinking in that way. Um, so a couple examples might be um, really focusing on what they're good at, you know, starting at the, the bare basics at the beginning, you know, what are you good at? What's something easy you can do? So let's say he says to you, um, you know, mommy, that's too hard. I can't do it. And be like, okay, well, what can you do? You know, what is something you can do? Or what's an easier part of this? You know, maybe the whole thing as a whole is too overwhelming for him, but, you know, maybe take a snippet of whatever the task is and say, well, can you at least do this part of it? This part might be easy for you or, you know, let him discover if it's easy for him. So, you know, kind of take it in chunks and let him 
um, you know, make the challenge less and let him um, succeed at maybe, a, I would say, a lower level, but for whatever that task is. Um, and then you can, yeah, I mean, it's it's just a shift. And even the, the language that parents use, it's not just the shift in the thinking, it's the shift in the language that we use with our kids that will help them you know, um, cause sometimes I, I hear parents say, I can't do it. I mean, I've, even with the Ikea, like there's times I'm like, oh yeah, I can't do it. I'm just going to wait for your dad to come home and he can, he can take care of it. Exactly. You know? So if I say that, then what are my kids learning from me? You know? So it's that shift in how we speak as well. So, um, something else you can ask your kids to try and shift that mindset a little bit is what is something new you'd like to try? You know, let them dabble in different things. Let them try different things to see maybe they might be good at something they never expected to be. Um, maybe they're curious about something that they're not sure if they're good at, but maybe if they give it a shot, you never know. And if it doesn't work, then move on to something else. But give them the opportunity to try new things. Um, I love this one. Three things that make me awesome are. So really have them focus on what they're good at, not maybe things that they're not as good at and trying to push them to get better at it, let's say. Um, so I see this a lot with kids in school that are maybe better at reading and not so good in math. And so, you know, the parents will really focus on the math because they want to get that math grade up and they want them to be good at math because they don't need to worry about reading. But I say focus on the reading. That's what they're good at. Really build that confidence, really help them succeed in what they're good at. And so asking kids, you know, what are three things that make you awesome? You know, whatever that is, and then really focus on those positive things. The other things will come around. The math grade will will come around. I'm not saying to ignore it, but really focus on what the kids' strengths are instead of their weaknesses. I love that. And yeah. what are some of, I know you talk about some mantras or affirmations that we can say with our children to help them with their growth mindset? Yes. What would some of those be? Yeah. And I honestly suggest for parents um, to have their kids, if they're able to write um, or even just draw a picture or really be involved in the process. Um, uh, I've done this with my daughter before um, when she would have, after we were in a really bad car accident last summer and she was having some trouble sleeping at night and, um, you know, having nightmares and just kind of reliving some of the trauma from the accident. And so I would, you know, make little post-it notes for her to put on her bedpost that say, you know, I'm calm, I'm strong, I can sleep, you know, tonight, um, you know, whatever the case is. And so um, I would say, you know, make it a process with you and your child, you know, write them on a post-it note, have them draw a picture, have them post it up in their room, post up in their bathroom mirror, whatever the case is. But a couple examples is, um, I can do it. You know, something so simple, but I can do it. Giving them that confidence. I will be the best I can be today. Um, I'm proud of myself for giving it my all. I haven't done it yet, but I will is a good one. That's one of my favorites. This is another pot, uh, one I love. All I need to do is try. Um, I love that. I'm going to be, I'm going to try my best today. I'm going to have a good day. If I fail, I'll try again. Um, I could go on and on. I have so many of them, but um, if something's difficult, I won't quit. But I mean, you get the picture. It's just really, you know, giving into those daily mantras or daily affirmations that they can visually see, like I said, via a picture or words, um, you know, on their wall, in their room, in the bathroom, on the fridge, you know, wherever they might see it and really going over with them, you know, having them repeat it back, you know, cause I think the repetitiveness will really sink it in. So if they, if they keep saying it, they're going to start believing it. That's actually really good advice for adults. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay, I can figure this new system out, you know. Right. I mean, yeah. Zedcaster just came out with the new <laughs> about <laughs> five minutes interview. And I'm like, all right, we got to figure this out and I can do it instead of being like, I can't do it. This is too hard, you know. Yeah. This, the growth mindset applies to everyone. And I feel like, it, uh, people don't even <clears throat> realize that they're doing it where yeah. they credit themselves. It just is such a natural, I even have some friends where it's like Jameson, like their first thought is like, that'll never be me. That'll never happen to be to me. Right. I'll never be able to figure that out. And they don't even realize it. It's almost an unconscious thought. So, and sure. I love, and I feel like I'm going to add a little, like if it's okay, <laughs> I think it would be yes. good. Yes to meditate on those things and see yourself like your higher self accomplishing them and see like, even if you don't feel like you are that person now that you can be uh -huh. that person and show up as that person, even if you don't believe it now, like I think that's the power of meditating right. where I'll visualize 
or try to connect with this version of myself that I might not be yet, but I, I act as if I am her, you know, and I show up as her and I connect with her and right. what would, how would she act in the situation? And if she didn't have any fear, if my higher self had no fear, what would she look like? What would she act like? What decisions would she make throughout the day? And it's like, you know, you see yourself as this really powerful, confident, competent person who can learn and grow. And it's just super motivating. So anyway, I'm all about meditating. Yeah. So I think like applying all those affirmations to your meditation could be so helpful. I love all of those. Oh, yeah, extremely powerful. And you even said it. I mean, the the easiest way a parent can start shifting their own language and mindset to help their children is the word yet. I haven't done it yet, or I haven't accomplished it yet. You know, whatever the case may be, but you know, give that forward, forward thinking of, you know, it, it may not happen, but let them feel as if they will, they will conquer it one day, they will, you know, accomplish it one day and to not make things so close minded. So if a child says, I want to get all A's this year, you know, you can say, that's a great goal. I'd love for you to get all A's. But what I really want you to do is try your best and enjoy what you're learning, you know, and kind of not make it so concrete. Um, or if a child says, um, you know, I want to read two books every single week. Okay, that's great, but that's a very closed way of thinking. You can say, I love your passion for reading, but let's read more tomorrow than we did yesterday, you know, just to keep it very open, open ended instead of closed off. So I think all those things are just the two easiest ways you can really help your children um, shift that way of thinking in their language. That's actually really good. Also, I'm going into it because I'm a trainer and a health yes. coach. So that's also really a good advice for you know, for clients, for women who are trying to lose weight and they yes into that like very closed mindset and fixed mindset of setting their goal. They're like, mm -hmm. I'm 20 pounds in, you know, in five weeks. And that's like their idea of success. You right. know, and their body might not do it. And just because they like decided that that was the time frame that they wanted to lose weight. That's a very... Yeah mindset. So what would be more of a, like a growth mindset or a better way to set that goal? You know, something like I will eat healthier this week than I did last week. I will exercise more than I did last week. So let's say you do, you know, usually, you know, 10 minutes a day. Well, maybe tomorrow I'll do 15 minutes. The next day I'll do 20 minutes or whatever it is, you know, but just make it open-ended where I will, you know, exercise or I'll, I'll, I'll walk more steps. You know, let's say they have a Fitbit or something. You know, I'll walk more steps this week than I did last week. And if it's just one more, all they have to do is one more than last week. But the mindset shifts to uh, not from a concrete, I'm going to do 10,000 steps every single day. Because if that person doesn't do 10,000 steps every day, they're going to get discouraged. They're going to feel defeated and they're not going to want to try anymore. They might quit. But if they say, I'm going to walk one more step than I did yesterday, and each day I'm going to continue walking at least one more step than I did the day before, then they, they it's more open and, and, and they can accomplish it. It's an easier task to accomplish and then builds their confidence and their, you know, their strength, you know, to, to get that job done. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. So my last yeah. question for you is, have you, do you have any examples of this with your children? Like a personal example of how you maybe helped them to overcome a fixed mindset. Sure. I mean, going back to the example, when we got in the really bad car accident last summer and my daughter was having trouble sleeping, I mean, she would refuse to sleep in her own bed. She wanted to sleep in, you know, uh, she's too big to sleep in our bed. She, she's one of those kickers that, you know, kicks around in the middle of the night. So that was not an option. Um, so she would always say, well, how about I sleep on your floor? How about, you know, and I just said, no, you can do this. Um, you know, you can do it, you know, or I would have her lay in her bed, um, you know, for more than five minutes, you know, I'd say, well, how about you lay in your bed for at least five minutes? And if you can do it longer, great, but let's just try. And that's when I started making the little post-its on her bedpost of, you know, the affirmations to, you know, I'm strong enough to do this. I'm going to have good dreams. You know, I'm going to sleep through the night. And I just, I, you know, put her to bed, I would say her prayers. And then I would go over each, I would, I would say it. And then she would repeat it after me before she went to bed at night. And eventually just the repetition of that and just the, you know, the support and, and whatnot, she was able to start, you know, you know, getting rid of her nightmares and her fears of sleeping in her own bed. And she was able to sleep in and she's been sleeping in her bed ever since. So, I mean, it seems like an easy fix, you know, it wasn't, it took some time, but, um, but that is something that really, you know, helped her recently. No, honestly, that's not an easy fix. Like 
most, I feel like a lot of parents, um, especially now in our generation is we want to almost coddle them. We almost Mm want to protect them from feeling uncomfortable or from feeling that pain. Like it would have been way easier for you to just let her sleep on the floor. That would have been easier than for you to go through this whole process and teach her on her own that she can do hard things and that she can get through it. And you're kind of coaching her through. That was not an easy fix. That was the way harder fix. But in the long run, now look at what you taught her. And now she has more confidence in herself because of that. And because you didn't sit and protect her from feeling that, you know, feeling scared or feeling maybe nervous, you taught her tools to overcome it, which helps in the long run. So I think that was a harder choice, but the more rewarding choice for her. Sure. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And there were sometimes the beginning where I'd have a really long day and I was tired and it was easy and I did have her sleep on the floor because I just couldn't muster the energy to go through all of that. But then once I shifted, then I was able to help her shift. And then it ended up, you know, uh, putting the effort in and then, you know, you got the reward at the end. So, um, but it's hard. I mean, having teaching, uh, you know, adults to have a growth mindset and to shift their thinking so they can actually teach their children that as, you know, role models and, you know, modeling it for them. It's, it's hard. It takes some time. So I always tell parents, you know, take it a day at a time. You know, we're, it's not going to happen every time. There's going to be things that we are going to think is, you know, a hard, but, but we just have to keep trying at it. We have to just be mindful of the language we use and the actions that we take um, and, you know, how we portray that to our children. And eventually it'll start getting easier and easier and more natural. Yes. And I actually just listened to a podcast today while I was working out. And um, one of the phrases that she used was, um, just because you haven't done it before, it doesn't mean you can't. Yes. And I loved that. And it was like, don't look at your past and what you've done before as an indicator of what you can do. Cause that's in the past. Right. So looking to the future and your future is a blank slate and you can do anything. And it has nothing to do with your past or what you previously accomplished or your previous mindset, you know? So I just love that. So I'm so grateful that you were able to come on the podcast and give of your time and your wisdom. Can you tell everybody where they can find you and maybe some of your resources that you've created? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. Um, if anyone wants any more resources, um, I'm, you can find me um, on my website at theparentologist.com. Um, I'm on social media, pretty much every channel you can think of, every platform. Um, uh, on Instagram and Facebook, I'm at The Parentologist. And then on Twitter, it's um, at Dr. Parentologist. Um, and I'd love, I'd love people to reach out. I'd love for people to ask questions. I have a therapy Thursday segment that I typically do once a week. I'm even starting my own podcast soon. Um, so I'll have lots of great topics on there. And then I'm in the midst of writing my first book. Um, so hopefully crossing my fingers that I can get that up and running and get that done by the end of this year. So lots of great things in the works, but the best way to reach me is either through, um, Instagram, email, um, or my website and lots of blogs on all sorts of topics, helping children, um, in a therapeutic way. Great. Thank you so much. I honestly don't know how you do it all. I'm so (laughs) impressed. I don't know either. I will link everything she just said in the show notes. So if you guys want more information, you can just go to the show notes and I will link it all. So thank you so much, Dr. Kim. I will talk to you later. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us in today's episode. If you liked the content and want to hear more, remember to hit that subscribe button and write a review. As a small business owner, I appreciate it more than you know. If you are looking for a program to help with self-confidence, to lose weight, get in shape, and work on your mental, physical, and emotional health, check out my training programs on www.bodybybree.com. My team and I help to hold you accountable through the Body by Brie app, where you log in to see all your workouts, custom meal plan made specifically for you and your needs and communication through the messenger. You are never alone when you're on the Body by Breed training program. Click the link in the show notes to get more information on how to transform your life from the inside out.